forgive me if I missed it and you already stated it, but why are you not just seeking a straight 50 foot by 210 foot rectangle with this split? Just the split going all the way to the back fence. It, it, if we do just the 50 feet right to the back of the fence, the lot could handle probably one duplex or one single family residence with a deep back lot. And that would leave the space behind the two of them. I should probably have Brenda address this because she knows this better than I. But basically, we would be retaining the option for somebody to do an infill with a duplex in the back part of the lot after, under this code. So you could build something in the front that would fit with the streetscape and then you could have something in the back. And there are three duplexes along the back property line already. So that would still retain the character. But we want to be able to retain the option for whoever buys that piece of property to be able to develop it to the maximum density that is allowed by the city and is in fact desired by the city. If that makes sense. Go ahead, Evan. It makes sense. And then you know, there's a follow-up that it, it be, that begs to be asked. Then, if we create this possibility for creating a duplex in that back part, as well as the street frontage duplex, it seems like that would require the 20-foot driveway and all the assorted problems that would come with the flag lot that you mentioned before. Yeah. Well, if that is a 50-foot wide lot, then there are options other than putting that driveway against the west property line. Okay, just thanks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess I have the identical question. You said earlier, you've now said two things that I'm concerned about. First, you said that the existing lot could have, without subdividing, three duplexes on it. Is that what you said earlier? Yeah. And then you just said that you could develop a duplex in the back. Um, but the code provides that each duplex lot, each two-family dwelling lot, requires 7,000 square feet and um, 60 feet of foot of road frontage, unless it's a flagpole lot. So. I'm having a very hard time understanding. I mean, what you have right now under the code is the ability to have a single fam single, single family home or a single two family home. If you tore down the existing structure, you could have five townhomes or you could have your flag pull up. But I don't understand why you think without subdividing you could have three two family dwellings or even well, how you could have it's two. my understanding <clears throat> and I might defer this to my realtor it's my understanding that under this current code in R3 and R4 zones you do not have to have separate lots for the buildings that it could be developed based on the number of square feet that are there so you could have two duplexes on the same lot well, it characterizes lot requirements, minimum lot areas, and minimum lot width. I don't know how we get around that. I mean, that would clearly require a variance. Rebecca, Rebecca, you want to address that for us, please? Well, so the minimum lot area for a two-family dwelling is 7,000 square feet. So if a lot is 14,000 square feet, they can't have two duplexes. Assuming it has six, two separate 60-foot frontage area, or linear frontage because the two-family dwelling also requires 60 feet of frontage. You're talking about the minimum lot width? Yes. I mean, lot means the same thing in both cases. You, it is talking about a legal buildable lot. That's the reason we use that word. Yeah, I guess I'm unsure whether or not the 60-foot lot width would, would have to be doubled when there's two two-family dwellings. Doesn't it say per each one? Um, it, says it says per. per. It does, it does Which means you could do it with a square so lot, but w the more rectangular it gets, the harder it gets mm -hmm. to put multiple right. structures on it. Other than with the flagpole lot. I mean, you have you can build two of them with a flagpole or one of them without. That's pretty much what we've got, short of the variance, right? Yeah. I just want to be make sure we all understand that point. Okay, that's that's all I had. Okay. Okay, you lost me on that one, but. 
I, I think that what I'm saying is I, you have the capacity right now to have a single duplex on your lot, period. And if you have a flagpole lot, you can have two. Short of a variance, that's all you can have. Okay, well, well it's my understanding that you don't have to have separate lots for them, but... I, the, the code's yeah. pretty clear, I think. Is that how you see it, Rebecca? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. Just a okay. Second. <laughs> All right. It, I think I'm going to have. To, I, I think I've got to disagree with Jerry. I, I believe if you have, if you have a fourteen thousand square foot lot, you can have two duplexes. The requirements. Sixty foot. You have lot. two requirements. You have a minimum lot area requirement and a minimum lot width requirement, and you have to meet both requirements. So each individual lot with a two-family dwelling must be 7,000 square feet and must have 60-foot frontage on the road. Okay. And just, you didn't hear who I am, but I teach land use law at the law school, so I have some, some measure of experience here. in this. Not just trying to guess here. And actually taught Rebecca. <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. Uh, but I just want to be clear you understand what is going I don't, I don't yeah. want you to be operating under a mistaken you know, yeah. assumption about what could happen here. Yeah. Well, it's, it's my opinion that when you have a, a conflict of interpretations that that is an issue that certainly should be settled. And I'm not sure whether or not this is the appropriate body to settle it, but um, this probably isn't the right time. And uh, if uh, necessary... Ma'am, you can believe me or not, I'm telling you there is not a conflict of interpretations. There's a single interpretation. I assure you. Okay. All right. Well, Kit, should we go on and see if we can? Uh, Brenda, would you like to speak? We got another person here on um, approval of this. Why don't you come on up and address us? Please state your name and your address, if you would. I'm Brenda von Vondrushka, and I'm representing Kit in selling this property. I live at 1827 Daves Avenue, and I'm an associate at Moscow Realty. Um, I had several meetings with Mike Ray, the city planning department, and um, it's my understanding in conversation with him that you need 7,000 square feet on a piece of property for every 7,000 square feet, the city allows you to put a duplex on that property. So this lot is approximately 23,000 square feet. Therefore, the existing house could be converted to a duplex, and one could put two additional duplexes anywhere on that lot as long as you meet the front, back, and side yard requirements. And it's not something that is just for this particular lot. I can't give you exact addresses, but several such properties come to mind. There's one on Kenneth Street on the south side of the road, pretty close to Blaine Street, where there are two duplexes on one lot and then a duplex on another lot. And the, the, the two duplexes are on 14,000 square feet, and I was associated with that. We did a lot line adjustment in order to correct that because the zone had changed. So with three duplexes next to each other and did a lot line adjustment so that we could make two on one and one on one. And then um, several duplexes on um, east of Mountain View off of F Street that were developed by Karen Stubbs in around 2002 where the um, there are several duplexes on one lot. And the, the, um, the discussion arose when Joel Plascon was city planner, and it was rather extraordinary when they did it, but they also measure, this, this city does, measure the front yard setback from the corner of the lot. So imagine you had a square like this. They, they measure the front yard setbacks from that corner. So the, the language of the code is pretty plain, but the way the city has been interpreting it since the time of Joel Plascon, they've allowed that to happen in the city. So um, it, it's happening right now despite what the actual language says. 
Okay, thank you. Someone could probably get Mike Ray on the phone. Well, here's our situation. Um, Kit, we've heard your testimony. Unless you got more that you want to add, I'm going to let you sit down and go through the protocol of asking if there's anybody else that would like to okay. talk. So, okay. Well, you want to do that, then, and uh, the audience, the TV audience doesn't see it out there, but the only two folks that we have in the audience is Kit and Brenda. But for protocol purposes, I'm going to ask if there's anybody else that would like to give any testimony uh, towards this public hearing, either for, against, or general comments. Please come forward at this time. Then I have a comment. Hearing none. I am fine with it, and I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing now. And Evan, you've got the floor. My comment was we wouldn't have to close the public hearing, too. We could deliberate, and then leaving it open, you could ask them to come back up, you know, to clarify something. So it doesn't make a big difference, but, you know. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move on as the board and discuss it. Um, Mark, I'd like to hear your comments. <clears throat> is a flag lot required to have only a 20 foot wide strip on its frontage or can it be wider it can't be wider Rebecca do you know the question the I'm sorry what that? was that <laughs> how wide can the flag lot drive be yeah can uh, it be it's a 50? minimum of 20 that's a minimum, though. Hold yeah. on just one second. Let me Is there a maximum on it? I guess it's a minimum point. distance of 20 feet, and it just says it shall not be less than 20 feet in width at any point. So okay. there's no but maximum, I guess. Couldn't this be Th there considered would, a there would be a with this 50-foot uh, width? Um. Well, I guess the only other thing I have to add is that a curb cut is limited in width as well to, right. to 20 feet. So you're asking if the 50 foot could qualify as a flag lot? Um, I guess if they had a 20 foot drive, they as, if, as long as the drive was only 20 feet in width. It, no, I, I no, it cannot, is it cannot be a flag lot. It, it has to be just accessed by a 20 foot drive all the way back. I think... I think the answer is, I mean, I don't, I'm not disagreeing with Rebecca. The definition of a flag lot. I think it's that you couldn't build within that. However, why did right. you couldn't build within Still it? Still would have to build on the back part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just because you wouldn't have a Because it would be the access room. point. It would not be the you want me to read the definition? envelope. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that'd be great, Rebecca. A, a lot with access provided to the part of the lot designated for use as a building site by a narrow corridor. So the building site would be in the back part, right. and that would be the part designated to build on. Rebecca, what are the what are the the setbacks for the back end of the flag lot? Are they still subject to front, side, and back lot yes. widths? Yes. Which are twenty for the feet. record what? Twenty feet in the rear. Is that what you're just asking about? Right, and then a side of five, side and of a combined fifteen between two. Combined fifteen. And a front yard of 20. I don't think with a flag lot there would be a front yard mm. because you've got the, the drive. Evan? Well, it's interesting to sit here and consider all the ways this could be developed that would be in character with the neighborhood or not in character because I can see it working both ways because if you allowed this second duplex back there and its rear yard becomes what would normally be the side yard because of its placement then you've created an anomaly in the neighborhood that might be out of character at the same time I could see it being developed in a way that everyone was very sensitive to the character of the neighborhood and uh, make sure that that happens but we don't get to decide that. I think all we're deciding is whether or not we think it's a good idea to have this second lot and the way it's configured. And we'll spend a lot of time trying to, to find 
I mean, like I said, we can find either the good or the bad of that of that potential development. We don't have a development plan before us. We don't know if it's two duplexes, one duplex, and and so I think we just have to decide it on its merits and, and go through the relevant criteria and see if we can meet them or not. I agree with that, Edmund. 